Good morning and thanks for joining us on another edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful Monday, the 29th of March, 2021. The month is fastly, I wouldn't even say uh, slowly, coming to an end. I mean, I remember when we were saying Happy New Month. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's been a pretty, actually, it's been a pretty fast year. Uh, 2021 has, has run by so fast. I agree. Feels like two weeks ago, uh, we started the new year and we're already, you know, at the end of March, the first quarter is over already. Uh, should put some pressure on everyone who has set goals for themselves, you know, <laughs> things that they wanted to achieve this year, including myself, you know, but, you know, I think you know, there's still no a lot goals. to, Ooh. you didn't set any goals? No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I, I did, you know, some goal setting, you know, a lot of you know, if one or two of them will be a bit delayed. But um, as long as we are alive, we'll be fine. Yes. Yeah, so good morning, good morning anyway. again to you. How was, your weekend? How was that weekend? Uh, it, was, it was OK. It was OK. True. Good to have true. you here. Yes. All right. Thanks for joining us once again. We have a lot on our plates this morning to share with you on a Monday morning, 29th of March, two days before the end of the, of the month. And we're starting this morning, as always, with going through the major stories, making headlines um, across the country this morning. We'll be sharing with you. We have our guests joining us in a bit uh, to quickly go through those uh, conversations. Also this morning, some of the things that we will be talking about, the by-elections that took place in Abia State over the weekend. We'll go through that. And the question really will be, um, how much is is INEC improving the process of uh, the electoral process here in Nigeria? There was also reported violence in Abia State over the weekend. And we'll talk about that also, um, how desperate Nigerians get or some persons get with regards to elections. I remember the policewoman who uh, was uh, um, attacked in the elections a few weeks ago who eventually passed on. Um, and so we, there's so much that we still need to, you know, to deal yeah. with in order to have seamless elect electoral process to you know, have an electoral process that doesn't have to be this violent. And of course, the actual winners can be declared winners without any of these chaos. Yes, and uh, when we're done talking about elections, we'll move on to patrol pricing for subsidy deregulation. There's just been so much talk for years and years now about petrol and how to make this more affordable for Nigerians, for a country that produces, you know, oil, for a country that exports oil, you know, it's just such a shame how expensive it is to buy fuel in Nigeria. So we'll have an oil and gas expert and as well as a former president of the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria to discuss the issue of uh, deregulation of patrol. And after that, we'll be speaking on uh, security matters. Yes, once again, we're bringing back the conversation on amnesty or no amnesty, the uh, redeemed Christian Church of God. I remember I shared this uh, report on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, where about eight members um, in Kaduna were kidnapped um, again. Uh, there was also follow-up saying that the kidnappers had demanded about 50 million naira. I saw comments on social media asking uh, the vice president, who is a, a member of the church, uh, and of course, uh, Pastor Enoka Deboye, you know, to you know say something. You know, but regardless, even if it's not their their roles and you know in particular, um, it's still you know important that we talk about the go back to the conversation on amnesty, on forgiveness, on what needs to be done. Um, in order for us to rid the country of these levels of kidnappings and violence scattered across the country. Um, we also, of course, remember the 39, and that's a conversation we had on Friday, the 39 uh, students who were kidnapped in, mm -hmm. um, also in the north. Uh, we spoke to one of their parents on Saturday, yes. uh, sharing his story and, of course, talking about what level they have been. It seems, and this is maybe the sad part of that particular one, it seems like we've moved on. Uh, from those, uh, you know, from, you know, the conversations concerning those uh, students. Uh, you don't see it in the news any, anymore, and that's not normal in any way. We can have 39 Nigerians in captivity somewhere, and it doesn't make headlines every day um, and, uh, talking about what the government is doing to rescue them. I don't see that happening anywhere else in the world. Uh, we always like to compare ourselves with the U.S., you know, and I can imagine 39 Americans kidnapped someplace. It's going to be news headlines every single day until those people are rescued um, or until, um, you know, something is done. So, um, sadly for us, it, it no longer even makes headlines. Um, over the weekend, we had one of the fathers uh, passed on. Oh, um, yes, over the weekend, one of the fathers of the students who have been kidnapped passed on. And so that, you know, brought it back in the news. But I'm... We'll look through, you know, and see what Monday has in the papers and see if it comes up. But I really, really doubt that it will come up again. Oof. Top trending now. Wiki. 
<laughs> yes, over the weekend also. I mean, it's, it's a great part about Mondays. There's so much, you know, that is, you know, that happens over the weekend that we get to unpack. And so um, the Grammy Award winner, Burner Boy, was hosted by the River State Government over the weekend. Um, it was, you know, a, a coming together of some of Nigeria's biggest acts. I, I, this morning I saw Timaya posting videos and pictures of the event. But there was criticism. Um, over, you know, one part of the, you know, of this whole story where the, you know, government apparently paid artists 10 million naira each uh, to come and perform. You know, people, you know, speculated that very likely Burner Boy, the Grammy Award winner, got a lot higher than 10 million. There's people who were for it and then there was those who were absolutely against it and asking, is it taxpayers' money you're using to pay artists to come perform uh, for a, you know, Grammy winner? Uh, there's those who say he absolutely deserves it, you know, because apparently there's people who finished a reality TV show sometime last year. <laughs> they also got cash gifts. They also government got houses. They got government appointments, <laughs> you know, for reasons that you can't really, really explain. And so what's wrong with artists coming to perform to celebrate Nigeria's, you know, currently biggest artist, you know, and Grammy Award winner along with, you know, Wizkid? What's wrong with spending some money to... Um, you know, to celebrate him. So that's where, you know, most of the controversy came up. I, I saw, you know, Tacha was trolled uh, because she came out in defense of the whole um, idea. And um, because we, we honestly cannot say where some of these funds come from, you know, and that's one of the things that we have issues with in Nigeria. When a governor decides to spend money, um, we, uh, you, know, as, you know, as people can't say exactly where that money comes from. And also there's no auditing really in the finances mm -hmm. of, you know, a lot of these states to determine where these funds come from. There's security votes. These governors receive 100, 200 million naira monthly in security votes that is unaccounted for and nobody explains what happens to those funds. So he has enough money to, you know, throw around. Um, and you can't really, you know, I wouldn't knock it. You know, okay. I, I mean, people get more for less. Sorry. I personally wouldn't. So we know how we keep saying artists and creatives do not get enough rewards and support for their work, right? Yeah. So it's great. Generous. Everybody's applauding Rike. You know, great thing for you to show such generosity, you know, to a Nigerian international artist such as Bono Boy. But the issue is, where is this money coming from? If it's from your pockets, that's fine. Cool. Like we said, generous, we'll all praise him for that. But if that's coming from the state treasury, then that's not generosity. That would be mismanagement of public funds. Because where were you when people complain about unemployment in your state? When people are out of school because ASU is demanding for how much now and they're not getting that. Universities and university lecturers have a lot on their plates. And it seems the government is you know, moving very slowly to solving that issue. When we're having pensioners complain about get, not getting what they do, when you're having doctors going on strike because they're not getting what they deserve. So where are you, like keep that same energy. If you're going to be so generous to artists, keep that same energy for essential service workers, people who are actually doing the job in making sure that the economy actually runs very smoothly. So it's not necessarily the state governor's um, burden where, you know, I, um, um, ASU, you know, it's complaining. What I'm trying it's not, to say, not, where I'm going to with that, okay, for example, imagine that all governors would come together and because your federal government will keep saying there is no money, even though you reach agreements, but you breach them. If all state governors will come out like Wiki and donate about 10 million naira to making sure that our educational system functions, do you tell me that, you know, ASU would be where we are or that Nigerians, we'll definitely have one less problem to worry so, about. So, so. What I am trying to say, it's not necessarily about ASU. What yeah. I am trying to say is that there should be better use of our money if that's from the state funds, if that's public funds, if that's money that belongs to gov the people of gov River State, then the money should be properly managed. Absolutely, but th this is this is what this is my this point. You know, so once again, we cannot really tell where those funds come from. That's the there's issue. a possibility that there is also a budget for entertainment and tourism in the state that you know you can pull money out of and do things like that. Hmm. Um, th th since we cannot really verify, it's not necessarily. Um, Wiki or the governor's responsibility to assist when ASU is crying out or when the NMA is crying out. It's not necessarily their role. On the state level, yes, you know, they should be able to use whatever funds are available to fund education, to fund healthcare, to fund whatever, you know, lapses here and there exist. Um, but because we cannot tell 
and because those questions are not asked really on the state level in the state houses of assembly, because that's where these questions should be asked. The River State House of Assembly should be able to say, um, Governor Wiki, where did you get this money? If you pay 10 artists, 10 million naira each, 5 million naira each, mm -hmm. where have you gotten this 70, 80, 100 million naira to fund this project? Um, every year, during um, Sullivan Chime's uh, tenure in Enugu, he, he did eight years. But every year, well, maybe not every, but at least four or five years um, during his tenure, there was something called Roadblock. It was a concert that happened every December, and it had a very, very big budget. Some of the biggest artists in Nigeria come to Enugu every year to perform. You can't also you know, determine exactly where those funds came from or how they gathered the money to pay because it's, 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 a, it's a free concert. Nobody buys tickets to Roadblock. These are examples of you know, ways that money just goes you know, in, in states across Nigeria. If you visit governors, you can tell. I mean, I've had that experience a couple of times. People who walk into any government house, and, and let, let's bring it down to the most petty level. People who walk into government houses, you can see former politicians who walk into to visit governors. You can see actresses, actors, musicians who walk into you know, any government house to pay a courtesy visit. We may not see these things on paper, but 80, 90% of the time, they leave there with some cash. And that's the reason for the visit in the first place, because they need to get some money out of it. But these are funds that are not accounted for. You can't ask the governor, where did you get this five million you just gave this actress? Where did you get this 10 million you just gave you know, this person? And so there's, there's so much of these funds. And that's one of the reasons why you know, I keep saying that we have a lot of leakages. We have a lot of issues with regards to auditing of funds on the federal and on the state and the local government level mm -hmm. that we don't talk about enough. When the state finish running its affairs for one year, do we have a state auditor general that can say every single or can tell where every single penny went into? Where do you know the security votes you know go really into every year, or every month that the, the state government receive? Local government allocations, where do they really go into? If you see markets, you see gutters, you see bad roads, you see lack of you know basic infrastructure. Lots of every questions, local government okay. in Nigeria receives a on the average a hundred million naira every month. What do these funds go into, aside paying local government salaries? And you see local governments that remain that way for decades. Okay. Let's move on to the next story. Still, you know, really intertwined with the one we've been talking about. It's uh, Debo, Mr. Macaroni. We know him. He's very popular for his skit. He's very popular uh, for the phrase, you are doing well, but are politicians doing well enough? That's the question this morning. He, you know, posted tweets on, you know, Twitter over the weekend and, uh, it sets social media on fire and people have been talking about this, retweeting and, you know, making their own comments on what they have to say about this. So Debo, Mr. Macaroni, um, went all out talking about politics and how we need a change of government uh, for the next presidential election. He, he says 2023 is almost here and politicians would use us against us. They have started work already from celebrities to social media influencers to kings of the streets to religious leaders. It's one big giant cartel. He went on to say, if we can't evolve into a force, we become pawns. And he says he would not join any of the two big political parties in Nigeria because it's a personal decision and that he would rather join a new force, a new political party that is that has not been corrupt with uh, you know people of integrity honest people, young, youthful Nigerians. And uh, he went on to say, let's keep giving this our best and you know, keep pushing so that force becomes the force. What I have to say about this is, I can definitely say that Mr. Macaroni speaks the mind of millions of Nigerians here in the country. Because when it comes to the APC, PDP, this political party, opposition ruling political party, it seems that apart from the whole idea of recycled politicians, the person you see in PDP today was in APC yesterday, PDP the day before, and APC again last year. So they just keep you know, hopping around from party to party, whichever serves their best interest. So I do understand where he's coming from and the yearnings of the people. I mean, if people didn't agree with him, you wouldn't have the NSAS protest because it's the police brutality that was an offshoot of the present administration we're seeing in the country today. So indeed, I feel, you know, can this work? Can this new force work? I believe so. If new political parties will come up with, with Nigerian youth who have the best interests of the country at heart, people like Mr. Macaroni, even though he might not want to venture into politics, you know, he's just an advocate. You know, if people come together to, you know, create that force, if they would have lesser 
fees, if they will charge lesser fees for, uh, you know, part, for nominations, to buy nomination forms, and not the billions of naira that APC PDP will charge you. If INEC will speed up their continuous voter registration process so everybody can get their PVCs, if we all will come out in mass to vote in 2023, I believe we can become the change that we want to see happen. Well, um, I would only just say um, two points that I would just quickly right. throw in. First of all, you know, I will always would give kudos to Mr. Macaroni because um, in the last long while, he has continuously uh, put his career on the line to always speak truth. Um, he's never been the person who's, who stays silent because, you know, doesn't want to lose big deals. He's used this platform to continue to educate and to, you know, spread the right message with regards Nigerian youth and the power that they have, um, you know, in the electoral process and, of course, you know, as citizens. Um, so I'll give kudos to him for that. But at the same time, um, a reminder that young Nigerians are so easily distracted. And that's why some of the things that he's saying sound right, but... You know, in reality, it's going to be really, really hard to achieve because there's so many reasons why. And one of the first lines that he said, they will use us against us. And that's very true. There's people who currently, who are young Nigerians, who are scheming and looking for ways that they can make billions out of the next election. Mm -hmm. They're looking for ways that they can convince some governor, convince the presidency that they can galvanize the youths and they can, you know, you can pull people in their favor. And they will get paid millions and hundreds, hundreds of millions of naira. In 2015, there's young people, I, don't, I wouldn't call their names, but there's young Nigerians who were part of whatever happened in 2015. We all know that. The electoral process, you know, yes. and they used that same Artists, celebrities. Scam. Yes, you know, and you gathered a lot of young people to, you know, go in a particular direction, left or right. Um, so, yeah, and at the same time, there's still the tribal, you know, um, uh, distractions. There's still the religious distractions. There's still the personal hatred. There's so much that distracts mm -hmm. us as young people. There's still also the laziness part, you know, where there's, you know, look at the number of young Nigerians that, that exist. How many of them has, have voters cards? How many of them are interested in the electoral process? How many of them are willing to go all the way with regards to But I think that, that political interest is actually growing. It's, I, I think where more youths are interested, interested in politics than before, more youths now talk about this more than ever before. And until I, it's I really, time to actually, until no, it's time no, really, to actually okay. do the work. I, I really can't wait, you know, for 2023 because then we can now see just how much interest, All you right. know, the youth have in politics. All right, let's um, go on a short break. When we come back, we're going into off the press uh, major uh, reviews of sorry of uh, the major news stories making headlines this morning here on Plus TV Africa. It's the breakfast. Stay with us.